Hello everyone. This video goes along with the Mecca Waybill article I'm writing right now. And we're going to be looking at the unique art lines or unique art trains F7 uh, locomotive. So we have our A unit and our B unit. Uh, these were made in 1950, circa 1950s. I believe they were only made in 1950. Um, <clears throat> they are, you know, <clears throat> stamped metal, stamped steel with a plastic nose cap up top completely lithographed and not embossed at all so if you look at this the sides are perfectly flat the only embossing we have is the fans up top and that's about it um you know the the truck i believe these are just covers these are obviously stamped and embossed but other than that this is fully just a very highly detailed lithographed body on both the uh, b and the a unit um, with the A unit, we only have one powered truck. The other one is a dummy. Um, unlike what you would see with, you know, a higher end, uh, train maybe manufactured by Lionel. Um, we do have working headlights on the B, so that's why we have a power truck there, but it doesn't do anything other than providing power to the light bulb. Um... As I said, all stamped, very, very basic setup. Um, very interesting train, very large train. These things are roughly 14 inches long each. And as nice as they are, there's no car that really goes along with them that looks right, in my opinion. Um, I've seen a couple of people try to use post-war Lionel um, aluminum cars, which they don't look too bad, but I think they look too real as opposed to the rest of this. Um, I've actually tried to put a couple of Lionel freight cars, like the uh, the 800 series, um, larger pre-war freights. They have the right height, but they're so short compared to these trains. And the one problem that I have with it is, again, we go back to the one power truck. It's not a very powerful train. Um, it pulls the B unit just fine. And if you take the B unit away, it actually gets a little sketchy because the first time I ran this train, after I got it and I cleaned it up a little bit, um, I applied power without the B unit. And the A unit took off like a plane. This thing just went flying off the track. Luckily, nothing got damaged and, you know, all was well. But it it's a very light train from that perspective. Neither one of these is overly heavy. And they don't feel very stable. So this is almost feels top heavy. It's not. It just feels that way. But I want to go over just some of the basics of the inside of this. And you can see what these look like. Because I've known about Unique Arts. I mean, obviously, I'm from Jersey. Unique Arts was manufactured in Newark. So they're a local company when they were still around. And I believe they took over from Dorfin, or they have some connectivity with Dorfin. So I'm just going to put that down like that. We have a very basic E unit. Funny thing about the E unit, it can't be locked out. So um, you're either, well, you're going in reverse, forward, or neutral. There is no, I can't lock it in forward position or reverse position. Um, which is fine, you know, it, it actually works very, very well. Uh, when I first got the train, it did not want to move at all. And what it turned out to be was the E unit itself was dirty. So I hit it with some contact cleaner, uh, worked the, the the plunger a little bit up and down, and that seemed to fix it, and now it's, it's running perfectly. Um, the motor itself, again, nothing fancy, very reminiscent of... You know what Lionel used to use in pre-war. Uh, it's almost just like a Lionel motor, but facing upwards instead of on its side. So, um, again, not the most powerful motor. And because of the weight of the train, it doesn't have to be that powerful. But, so what we're going to do is, the next part of this video, I'm going to be running this on the track. I'm also going to be comparing this to a Lionel 260, so you get an idea of the size. Um, like I said, these are 14 inches long. They are fairly large trains compared to 
um, say a number 10 or a 254 or well, number 10 would be standard gauge but a 254 and again I know I'm using all pre-war because that's basically what I collect but you know Lionel 260 locomotive even though it's pre-war it's a fairly standard size um, these things dwarf that uh, so in the next part of the video you'll see the comparison of the size and you'll see how well these run so uh, stay tuned and we'll be right back all right, so as I was mentioning in the first part of the video, um, comparing the Rock Island uh, Unique Arts Model 2000 um, to a MTH Lionel uh, 260, and you, you see just by the locomotive itself, there's a good two, three inch difference in length. Um, you know, another thing getting from the front view, they're not that far off, but there's more bulk, there's more mass to the Unique Art line. It's more of a chunkier locomotive as, a pair, as compared to the, uh, the 260. Um, you know, again, it's not horrible as far as it doesn't look wrong on the layout. Uh, just trying to find, though, cars to go along with it. That's going to be a little bit of a challenge. I think I'm going to try to do a few freight cars, even though I think they look a little dwarfed to it. Um, we can see here what a typical 817 caboose looks like compared to it. And we have the same height. They're actually you know, right around the same height, but the length is just so much different. I mean, this is probably a nine, nine and a half inch car where, like I said, you know, the locomotive is 14 inches. Um, and another example here is if we look at the Unique Arts compared to a 254, it's a huge difference. I mean, it's a massive difference. So, again, we know that when we're talking pre-war, scale doesn't really exist um, until you're talking about, like, the Hudsons and things like that when you talk about semi-scale. But... Predominantly, the sheet metal locomotives and freight cars and passenger cars were not really made to scale. They, they came in brighter colors. So, you know, where we have the lithograph and a later, you know, this was made after World War II, so post-war, um, you have more detail because of the lithograph, but the construction is very similar to a Marx or trying to think of an, a half and I believe would be similar to that as well. So you have more realism, but still a very toy-like appearance. So it will go fairly well on a pre-war layout. And these aren't going to get ran that much. Um, and I'll explain why in the last part of the video, which is going to be seeing the train run. So uh, stick around for that. All right. And here we go with part three of the video. Uh, the locomotive actually running on the track. Um, one of the reasons why I am not going to be running this constantly is my whole entire layout is been upgraded to DCC, DCS, uh, whatever MTH's version is. And that means I have constant, you know, what, 22 volts going to the track. So what I need to do is I have to run this guy separately and disconnect the actual brick that I have underneath the layout uh, that requires a handheld control so this is not going to be there all the time unless I can figure out a way of rigging up a transformer as a standby so it's something I'm thinking about doing haven't gone there yet all right so let's see this guy run that's a fairly smooth locomotive Like I said, it looks good on a pre-war layout. Um, you see, though, coming around, it does look fairly massive and chunky, especially when you compare it to, say, the city of Denver that's back there right now. Uh, it, it's 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 huge. Um, coming across the uh, the Hellgate, it, it fills that nicely. But again, fairly bigger than a typical Lionel locomotive 
And I'm wondering if that has something to do with the way it's made with the stamp seal and maybe, you know, Unique Arts didn't have the best tooling available to them to make things like that. So, either way, it works very nice. And like I said, all I had to do was basically clean it up. Um, right now, the E unit works just fine. We're going to drop it into neutral. Put a reverse. Now, you hear that train. That, that is struggling a little bit. Uh, mostly because it does not have a lot of oomph, we'll say. I believe there's supposed to be traction tires on the wheels. There is not on this one, so they probably deteriorated over the years. And I'm sure traction tires would probably help give this a little bit more power. Um, you know, as the rear truck also is connected to the front, we should have enough voltage that'll move going through just through the rear i believe anyway so that's that's an idea of the train running and again e unit works very well um nothing wrong with that again it's struggling right now and it's only pulling its dummy car so it would need to have another you know set of rubber tires installed on it and then even then i'm not sure how much it could pull but anyway that is the unique arts line or unique arts train f7 uh rock island model 2000 thank you for watching